You are listening to episode 16 of the Foley and James podcast and this week we are talking about living abroad. If you've ever wanted to live abroad, this is a podcast for you. We're going to go through exactly where we've lived, why we went there, the pros and cons and what sort of things you should consider if you ever want to move abroad yourself. I lived in, uh, I lived in Warsaw when I went to uni, I lived there for four years. Shit, and then uh, and then after, then I went abroad, and then I've come back, and I now live in Basingstoke, which is also shit. So I don't really like the places <laughs> I've lived in England, which for me is a big motivator for going abroad. Uh, why? Like yeah. I just I wanted to move abroad because I don't necessarily like England that much. Like I got bored of it after uh, you know twenty years of the same old, same old. I don't know whether it was just because of where I lived, and it was just quite a small city and therefore you know it does get repetitive or yeah. if it's just not for me because I, I moved abroad went to Germany uh, lived there for three and a half years or so and just loved it and I want to stay there you know as long as possible mm. but why did you move abroad in the first place um <clears throat> well my first kind of move abroad was uh for university I went to England lived in Medway which was shit but <laughs> like really shit but the people like that I was there was great. Um, I I went because my sister had done a year in England, and I'm like, well, you know, if she can do it, I can do it, kind of thing. <clears throat> um, and there was only one sports course that I was looking to do in Ireland, and it was like quite hard to get into. And then I saw this one in England, and and I was like, oh, University of Greenwich, it's great. I'll be in London, or you know. And then I looked online, it's like, oh, there's a different campus. Oh, I'll still be near London. And that was that was my kind of motivation. Like all a lot of my mates went and lived together in university and stuff. And for me, I was just like, yeah, you know what? I'll go somewhere completely different and meet a lot of strangers. Fair enough. Was that a big motivation for you though? Was like the 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 draw of London. In a way, in a way, because my my uncle lives in southeast London and my sister lived uh, over the other side of London. So I knew kind of if I needed to, I could go and see them all the time. Right. Oh, fair you know enough. that kind of way. But like, and plus, I love. I thought I'd be. Going to a lot more Arsenal games than I actually did. <laughs> and if if yeah. you didn't have that almost psychological barrier of having, well, not barrier, the psychological cushion, or rather, of having someone you know there, a member of family, do you think you would have gone? Um, probably, you know. But um, I do remember looking online and applying online, and I think all of the the three or four main ones that I applied for, we'll say it was four, like three of them were within two hours of London. You know, on a train. I think one of them was down outside the southwest of London. One of them could have been in London, and then the other one was up Manchester. I think it was. Right. I'm not sure. But yeah. No, good. Because for me, like, I didn't have the uh, the presence of someone else in Germany when I moved there for the first time. But I was super comfortable with going there because I've got so many happy memories of being in Germany. Like my all my mm. best friends, are f- happen to be from my German class at school, and we have really cool memories and stories from school exchanges we did in Germany. That's how we really got to know each other and they're still my best friends today. And for me, it was a big thing if I want to go see what it's like to live in that country and not just visit it because I love visiting it, you know, and is it is it that it's just a nice country to visit or is it somewhere that's actually really cool and I love, love living there. So that was a big part of it for me. Another reason or a big reason was because I went there to study it was the year that all the fees, tuition fees in England, like, tripled. Yeah, yeah. And I just, there's no way I could afford to do a master's degree in England that year. So I decided... Of course. I've got an opportunity here. I've noticed that they teach scientific master's degrees in English for free in Europe, in a lot of countries in Europe. But I wanted to go to Germany, like I said. So I was studying sports science, being taught in English, because when I went there, my German wasn't good enough to learn in German. Mm. Um, so I could learn in English, it was great, but at the same time be in the country and learn the language. Uh, Yeah, I had two options when I was looking for courses, and there was one in Magdeburg, which is in the old East Germany, you know, when the Russians uh, had part of it, it was in there, so it's... uh, And then there was another one in Konstanz, and I'd never really heard of either of these places. Konstanz is in the south of Germany on the Swiss border, and um, I just Googled them, because the courses both looked really cool. The one in Constant was, was sports science, uh, masters, and I'd you know, get to do physiology and biomechanics. 
and also some stuff with sport and health as well. It was a good little range of stuff. And the one in Magdeburg, you get to spend three months at the University of Valencia as well, which would have just been really cool. I would have been able to live somewhere else, you know. But I, I just Googled the two cities and had a look at where they were and what they looked like. And Magdeburg looked really grey and Soviet and kind of square. And Constance is on a lake next to the Alps. And, a, you know, it's a tourist destination and a student city. So the obvious choice was made for me, essentially. I went down oh, to Constance, but it was really cool. Um, and yeah, I lived there for, you know, for a good few years. Have you lived anywhere? Well, you, you're living a, uh, abroad in Canada now, aren't you? But have you lived anywhere other than, than England between then and, and Canada? Um, well, so I was in, not only was I was in Medway in England, um, I was up in uh, Yorkshire for a year as well in, in university, doing a, jumping into the final year of another degree. So I was up there. Um, Hull was the closest city, and I thought Medway was bad. Jesus, Hull is a shithole. Really? <laughs> was when I was when I was there. Anyway, I don't know if it's been upgraded. It can't have been downgraded much. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I was there for a while, and uh, I got I was home for about eight days, and then I went to live in Boston for, well, I think it was about five months. Jeez. Was it that long? November, October, five months. Yeah, yeah. It was the end of May. I went over, and I didn't leave until like the twenty. 9th or 30th of October. Wow. Why did you choose Boston? Was this, this was before you started doing the summer camps, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was the first year of doing it. So yeah. um, if you're a, a college student or just finished, as I was, you could get um, what's called a J-1 visa for the USA. Um, you can get it for most cities. But when, you, when I say cities, like the visa doesn't determine where you go. Or you choosing a city doesn't determine if you're going to get a visa or not. Right. I chose Boston because my mates were going there. And I'd been there when I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11 with uh, my family on, on holiday. And um, I remember loving it. <laughs> you know, I don't really remember the city, but I remember really, really liking it. Do you have any uh, like familial, any sort of links with Boston? Because obviously that's a huge Irish heritage, you know, place. I actually do, but... And I feel so bad. I never went to see them oh. when I was in Boston. <laughs> any time at all. <laughs> like any of the three times that I was there. <laughs> um, we saw them, you know, when we were over as a family. We saw, I went to see them then. Yeah. Yeah, back in whatever, 2000, I think it was, we were there. Uh, so you know, I went to see them then, but yeah, I haven't seen them since. Just so bad. But yeah, like, so I lived there for five months. What were you doing there? Uh, I was working. Because <clears throat> for a visa, you could work up until the end of September. And then you had like the, the whole of October as a grace period if you wanted to travel around and whatnot. But I, uh, I stayed in Boston, possibly working, cash in hand. Possibly, who knows? <laughs> that, <laughs> that J1 visa, was that, um, so is that still available? Was that only for Irish? I, th- I feel like I wouldn't have been able to get that. Or am I just not? Yeah, as far as I know, it's only for Irish, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've never heard of any, um, any other nationality getting it. You know, and a lot of Irish people do it. I, I, I think it's going to become harder to get now with that gobshite in the White House. <laughs> so um, I was lucky that I was able to do it at that time. It was a really good summer. Um, I was working, did a couple of days roofing. <clears throat> um, a friend, one of the guys I was with, his parents knew someone who's from, uh, originally from Galway, and he was out in Boston. He'd been there for whatever, 20, 30 years or something. He was a, a roofer, a contractor, and he, he took us on for a couple of days. Went up to New Hampshire, did that, and then I had already acquired a summer camp job, which we talked about in previous podcasts. You guys should really go back and listen to them. They're great. Nice plug. Thanks. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, this is the first summer working there, and um, I knew it was like five weeks of work, so I was quite happy with that. So <clears throat> I was still walking around Boston every day. Like it's, it's actually one of the ways I got to really know the city, by walking around, handing out my, my CV, you know, my, my resume. Just looking for work. Um, the only problem is, so this is 2012, back in like the good times, um, you know, where money was kind of plentiful before the big crash on the on the market and the housing market. When money was plentiful. <laughs> you make it sound like it was flowing in the rivers. Yeah. But you know, so the thing is, you had to get a job for your visa or else you'd have to leave, I think the end of June maybe or something like that. Or within 30 days or something. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Um, what Irish people used to do when they had enough money was they'd go over, they'd get a job, they'd tell the the, the office, whatever, where you your visa got issued from, 
or the company that you got your visa with like that oh yeah i've got a job this is where i'm working blah 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 and then they'd only show up half the time to work because they didn't need the money um so a lot of places in boston anyway were very skeptical about hire, hiring irish people because of that um but yeah as i said i got the summer camp job and then after that i was kind of running out of money a little bit once that finished and um i uh, got a job so my a friend of mine had started working for an irish lady in down by uh quincy market selling uh selling selling they had two stalls i can't remember what one of them sold but one of them sold like all those signs that you see every like oh, uh, we don't swim in your toilet so don't pee in our pool yeah yeah <laughs> you know those those kind of signs and like we, we love our cats and all of that kind of, and that was the stall and there's this other woman down there elizabeth at the time and she had two stalls as well and the way it's set up is like there's five stalls on one side and five stalls on the other side and just so people don't get special treatment every week the stalls rotate and then move on to the next spot so for a week at a time your stalls are going to be split up at a big a big opening so like one person couldn't out, couldn't really cover the two if it's a busy time of year which you know it's it's the summer in boston there's a hell of a lot of people around yeah <clears throat> so for this week this uh, woman hired me and um i guess i did a good job so she kept me on for the rest of the summer which was nice so yeah i spent about 10 or 12 weeks selling uh, souvenirs and little knickknacks in one of the busiest spots in boston that's pretty cool where were you staying just in a hotel? <clears throat> no, 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 no. We had um, we had a house out beside Boston College. Oh, cool. Um, so like during the school year, it would have been used for students, and I because I was there until October. For the last kind of six weeks that I was there, there was well, not even maybe four weeks that I was there, there was actually students living in the house. How old were you at that point? Like, were they about your age? Uh, they'd have been a couple of years younger. Right. But um, yeah, yeah. Like I was twenty three. So I was, so they'd have been, yeah, like 20-ish, 21 even, a couple of them. So That's cool. It's good. We had most of us, I think there was three, let's say there was three students. I got on really well with two of them, and then one of them was just a bitch. <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. <clears throat> like, there was no, we lived in such a nice area, there was no lock on our front door. There was like, you could just wow. literally just walk into the house. But the, the neighborhood paid for the police to patrol constantly, so there was never an issue at all. Like, it was brilliant. But then this bitch came into the house and she was like no we need to have like two locks in the front door and, and all of this crap oh what a bitch wanted safety for the <clears throat> house i know right i know <laughs> god live your life woman <laughs> <coughs> she's cool. australian not that, it, that not that that has anything to do with it but. so yeah well, um you said was it three and a half years you lived in germany yeah i was there for three and a half years so two years was doing my master's uh then then i took a year going traveling with you and then i went back Back to Constance just because I loved it so much and had nothing else, you know, going on really. I was just sort of looking yeah. for what was next, and I just stuck around there for a bit. So um, would you say that's been a that's been a constant in your life in the last few years? Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. it's lovely. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I eventually uh, I wanted to stay in Germany like for the long haul, and I was applying for PhDs because I knew that's what I wanted to do. And as it happened, uh, there was only one opportunity for me to do a PhD in Germany that would have you know, suited what I needed as far as being in my subject area and offering a bit of money, you know, towards my upkeep and stuff. And uh, yeah. that one would have been really cool. And it would have it would have also sent me to Sydney, Australia for a year Ooh. as part of that. Yeah, that would have been really nice. And I got through to like the last three people in the application process and they decided for someone, one of the other two at the last like hurdle, which was a shame because that was my only opportunity in Ger to stay in Germany. Um, I eventually it got accepted onto a PhD in, in England again, back in Winchester. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I started there in July last year, so 2016. I, th I think I was less than a month in and the surgeon, I, so I'm doing sports medicine looking at knee surgery and the surgeon I was working with said to me, well, the, the, the study that you're going to be doing, um, there's already a research team in based in Luxembourg who you know they do this kind of research protocol quite a lot so they're really experienced in it they'd be really good experience for me to go along and, and work with them and also make the work a lot better because it's with people who are experts in the field and so within yeah. a month of me going back to England I was already being sent back to Europe again so that was really cool and in the end of January this year in 2017 I moved over to Luxembourg and I've been there 
for the past five months or so. Um, actually coming to the end of that now, but uh, yeah, I'll be back in England in July. Um, the biggest thing about living abroad, as far as downsides go, is is the being away from your family and friends. It's really obvious, you know. Um, it's not been so bad for me just because Germany and Luxembourg aren't far away. You know, with with budget airlines and stuff, I'm an hour away and about forty euros away. Um, it's really not far, and but that's not to say that you don't notice that you're away because particularly here. Because I, th- I don't know how you feel about how you get with like loneliness and stuff being abroad. Because for me that wasn't a problem in Germany because I made friends on all, everyone on my course quickly. But in Luxembourg it's been a bit of an issue because I'm doing a PhD so I'm on my own. Although I'm doing my research with other people, when I come home at the end of the day that's it. And I don't know anyone here. Uh, so it's not sort of a given where you're either working and you just you have people at work that you might make friends with. Or you have your group of friends from home or you have a group of friends from your course. I don't have that, so I would have to, you know, go out and actively search for social interaction, which is fine. It's just it's just a little bit different to what I'm used to, and I've found that isolation is a bit of a thing. But, I mean, from other, other than that, it's I've not found that many downsides, to be honest, because I think, for me, the biggest thing would have been distance. You know, like, for example, in South America... When we were at the bottom of Argentina, I was like, I was very aware that it's not, it's very difficult to be further away from home right now, you know? We're as far south as it's possible to go without going to Antarctica, and I was very aware of that. And I don't get that at all, because I'm only an hour flight away in Germany and Luxembourg, you know? So how is that, how do you get on with that in Canada? I, personally, I, I'm, I'm easy. Like, I'm, I'm like that anyways, where it's, like, I was actually just talking um with some of my family very recently like some today one yesterday whatever but and it's like oh do you plan on going home over the summer and i'm like i have no idea (laughs) you know like if i'm going home it is a six seven hour flight and there's no point me going home for any less than a week realistically so Mm. um like for me to go home whereas you said yeah it's a couple hours maybe two hours of flight or whatever at most for me it is it's it's a whole day and a half (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went home. I went back to England for the weekend, literally just last yeah. weekend for a wedding. You know, that's exactly that's not a big deal. For that's me. the thing, and you can do that. So, but but personally, no, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, oh, just because, cool. just because, really, I'm enjoying it here. That helps a lot. I think if I wasn't, it'd be a a big um, awkward stepping stone in in a sense. Um, but no, like you know, I'm loving it here, um, and I found that. At least I like to think that I'm quite easy going, and I'm I'm pretty decent at making friends wherever I go. So yeah, so that helps, you know. If you got if you had gotten there, after having you know made all these plans to move from Ireland to Canada mm. and spent the money on the flight and all that stuff that you had to do before you got there, if you arrived in Canada, and you hated it, what would you have done? Would you have gone back home, or would you have no, moved I'd have, somewhere I'd have, else? I'd have, I'd have, I'd have definitely because where I was working. You know, because I came over with a job, which helped a lot, or to a job, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I'd have stuck it out for that year of the job or the, the school year, so I'm working in a school. And I think if I wasn't enjoying it, I'd have been like, all right, well, on to the next place. You know, I still have another 14, 15, 16 months on my visa. So I'd be like, all right, let's head to uh, Vancouver or something. So you would have stayed in Canada, though? Yeah, think? definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, right now, I'm aiming, I'll probably look to uh, start my permanent residency. Um, uh, process in September or October. Oh, really? You're not thinking of... Uh, you've got no intention of moving back to Ireland for the long term or anything? Not right now, no. no. Cool. Obviously, something could change in the next hour and, and change that, but right now, no. Of course. That's that's interesting. I didn't realise you wanted to stay. You're, de- you're, you know, you're, you're dead set on Canada, really, for the long term, yeah, well, like as, people, it, as it stands. Yeah, most people here are amazing, and there's always... A, you've seen it as much as as anyone like the like university sports in North America are quite big. So, you know, if I can get to that level as a coach or as a whatever in, in sport and get up to that level and then professional sports is the next level. So if I can do that, you know, not as a player, obviously I'm not, I I think I have to accept that now that I'm not going to make it. (laughs) Um, But if I can get to that as in any really facet of, of sport and get to university, then get to professionalism, 
then it's this is one of the best places to do it. That's cool. So is it's it's similar to the US then as far as yeah. that tier yeah. that ranking of or that hierarchy of sports. Yeah, not as um what's the not as I don't want to say free flown, like you know, not as kind of as as completely laid out. Um, it's also not as uh, vast. There's not quite as many opportunities. That's just sheer population size, though. You know, which right. makes yeah, which makes, makes sense. sense. And um, and the the sports themselves are a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously up here, ice hockey is way more. Sorry, sorry, Canadian people. Hockey is uh, way more <laughs> uh, important than American football or anything. You know, or yeah, of course, that, or that kind of football, or can, or Canadian football even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they got the CFL, haven't they? Yeah, up there, yeah. and that's I, I've never, I don't know anything about it, but I've, you know, compared to the NFL, I don't think it's much, is it? Or, or it's nowhere near as big. No, definitely not. But it's still a professional sport, so <laughs> sure, <laughs> it's something sure. Like, no, but hockey's yeah. awesome, man. I like it. Have you been to see any hockey games? Or what you been? Uh, yeah, I went to into Halifax there. When was it? Oh, hang on, I have the ticket here on my wall. Uh, January 20th I went in Halifax it's kind of like I'm not sure what level it is it's like the NHL I think it's two levels below that we okay. saw the, um, the Halifax Mooseheads versus <laughs> oh my god I'm not even going to try and pronounce that it's they're known as I think just BCD it's like By Camo Drakkar it's a very odd name but yeah so that was good like the arena was packed like packed so and it was a couple of like over ten thousand people, I'd say, in the arena. Jesus, like for cool. uh, for for that level, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, for it's two yeah cool. for two levels below the top leagues, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, why did you choose Canada anyway? I mean, if you're if you're um... easier to get a visa than the US. <laughs> and that was okay. That's exactly what I was going to ask. That oh, is literally fine. like there's no there's no um oh Canada's such a great you know there's no like. Canada is a great country, don't get me wrong, but there was no, no, none of that thinking behind it. It was not a case of, oh, I'm not, I'm not looking two years ahead. Oh, Trump might get into power. I'm not going to go to the US. <laughs> like it was yeah. just a case of the, the visa is just so much easier to get. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, I'm glad I'm here now. Canadian people are uh, like those stereotypes do come from somewhere, and and you know, 80, 90 percent of people that I've met are are incredibly nice. Yeah, I found that as well. I spent a couple of weeks in Canada. I've I've been to a few cities there, and uh, that's definitely a memory that's stayed with me. Is just how nice people are. Yeah, and you and you and that's you saying that in in cities, you know, like I'm I'm living in yeah. a town of four thousand people. You can imagine how nice a lot of them are. When they're that's not probably on. yeah, probably uh, amplified <laughs> tenfold. I imagine. Yeah, like for me, it was like Toronto, Montreal. And, yeah. Um, how how are you with like? Do you get being in Nova Scotia? You're sort of You've got uh, Quebec sort of wedged between, you know, your Nova Scotia's English speaking and then uh, Ontario's English speaking. Quebec's wedged in between. Do you get much French speakers? Um, well, I, I, like, I'm in, I'm a, personally, I think I'm in a bit of a unique situation anyway, just because I work in a private school that has a lot of um, foreign people. And not only that, like we've a lot of people from Montreal and Quebec, so we've do we've we've quite a few French speakers anyway. <laughs> so I come across a lot more than than someone else would if they just moved over here and were working in uh, an insurance office or something like that. Oh, interesting. No, fair enough. Yeah, but um, no, I haven't been haven't been there yet, Quebec or Montreal. The only real travel I've done has been uh, had a weekend in Ottawa for a race in February. Um, <clears throat> I've been to a couple other places for. Uh, like football, sorry, soccer tournaments with the school and rugby tournaments, and then, you know, so. Well, I can recommend both of those, like Quebec City and Montreal. Mm. Like Montreal is just a huge, just a like a big city. It's what you you know, it's a big city. It's really cool. Quebec City is just beautiful. Like it's where you go on like a honeymoon or something. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's really, it's it's at least it was you know when I went there sort of nine years ago. Yeah, cool. Um, no, I, no, I do definitely plan on it. There'll be a. There'll be a few races in around Montreal and Quebec, and if I can sort out time off work and stuff, you know, I'll, I'll definitely go for a long weekend and do a race or something. That's cool. Go on. So you've told us. Uh, well, no, actually, you didn't. What is? Have you got? Have you got a worst thing about living abroad that you found, whether it was in England or in in Canada or in Boston? I honestly no. Like I, I love traveling. I love living abroad, and like you know, you you do miss f- friends and family no more than what you said, but. Like it's at the end of the day, I'm looking out for 
for kind of my happiness as, as much as anything. And I know that sounds selfish, but I won't deny the fact that I am selfish. <laughs> and um, so I'm, I'm enjoying well, it. fine. Yeah, I'm enjoying it right now. So, yeah. So do you think it would be a case of that if, you know, you realize that you're not enjoying this or this, it's the happiness is not there anymore, that it would just be a case you just move on? Is that, is that the yeah. point? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty cool. I like yeah, that. like you know, I've no, I've no ties here right now. You, um, I like that though. You, you know, if it doesn't make you happy, you'll move on, and so yeah. therefore, there's not really a worse thing about it. What's the best thing about living abroad compared to staying in Westport? What do you, or in Ireland, just generally? Initially, job opportunities. You know, that was the root, part of the reason I came here anyway. Um, I don't know. I think it's just different. Um, like I've no real. It sounds weird, but I actually enjoy having no real safety net now, <laughs> if that what makes you sense. You know, so like when I went to university, I had my, my uncle and my sister close by, but here, it's just, no, I'm on my own here. And uh, it's it's kind of exhilarating in a sense. Does it like make you feel freer or, or what? A little bit, but it, it forces you to go and meet people. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, when I, I, I only thought about that question about what's the worst thing, and I was not prepared for what's the best thing. <laughs> so I haven't really thought about it but off the top of my head that'd be that'd be one of them that's really cool that's almost like the other way of looking at what I said was the worst thing is the far yeah. as the, that feeling of isolation you've completely taken that and put a positive spin on it trying to yeah. making me making me look like a massive pessimist <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no you're right though no 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 no, I, no I'm not I, I, I just I, I, I like that yeah. you've you've taken that your best thing is almost the same as my worst thing, yeah. but for a complete well, obviously for a different reason. But you just look at it from a completely different angle. I think I that's like that. yeah, and no, I think that's like, uh, I think I've had to, in a sense. Like I could come here and kind of get on with people that I work with, or kind of like maybe half commit to a rugby team or or whatever, or not even not commit at all. But instead, I just kind of figure, well, I'm here now, so I might as well, you know, give it everything try to interact with everyone. If I don't like people, fine, I won't interact with them anymore. But That's cool. I mean, that comes with just being a traveller in general, doesn't it? You know, that, that kind of mindset. Yeah. That sort of openness to meeting people. And if you don't like them, well, then you don't have to keep meeting them. That's fine. Exactly. Just keep meeting as many people as you can. No, I think my favourite thing is very different to yours, although it, re it re relates to just the people as well. So my favourite thing about living in Germany, that's where I spent the most time, uh, is I find the people to be incredibly friendly. I find yeah. that I like I I feel more comfortable there than I do in England around strangers. Okay, so my best friends are my friends from England, with a couple of exceptions as well from from Germany. But uh, my 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 <coughs> core group of friends are from England. All right, Foley. I, I, to be fair, <laughs> no. To be fair, I consider you as part of that group from England, though, because that's yeah, I know, I know. I figured that much. I figured that much. <laughs> I was only joking as all. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like strangers in England are less open. To, well, for exactly the things you were just talking about, they're not as open to meeting new people and and uh, just. You know they're they're more worried about what if it's not a nice person or what if it's not yeah. a nice time and that and I don't get that sense in Germany. I don't know if you get that same in Canada. Maybe people are like that. They're they're very open. I mean, in Canada too. Um, mm -hmm. And I just I just no, find that people are. I, I like the lifestyle more as well. Like in Germany, it's very active. People are cycling a lot more as part of their day to day life. You know, maybe cycling to work or cycling to school. Uh, they're generally fitter and as a sports student and just someone who loves playing and watching and doing everything to do with sports i just like that part of life you know oh no yeah i completely agree like i could i could say the exact same thing about one of the best things like people i think if you're a foreigner you know which we are um in in our respective countries now mm. people are more open they're i don't want to say more interested uh, i but think they're that's definitely more open to just like saying hello and like seeing oh who's this person <laughs> kind of thing and not not in a nosy way just in a kind of sheer curious way as much as anything yeah i do agree with that because i meet german or any whatever country i'm in i'll meet the people who are from there and they'll say so why do you like it so much and i say well because people are so much more friendly here and they're like really like i don't think that and i do think you've got something to do with that it'll be part of the rose-tinted glasses that you come with being a foreigner you don't have that yes 
sense of you know knowing how everything works but I do think that also people will show more of an interest in you there are of course people who hate immigrants and you hear about this all the time you know particularly now with with poli global politics and stuff people are like anti foreigners and when you are the foreigner I mean that to be fair actually this is probably only applies to unfortunately to white people at least within Europe when you are the foreigner you don't get that you that sort of dislike yeah. you don't feel that dislike um, and so I actually only encounter friend, friend, I've only encountered friendliness with the exception of one time in Germany I was in Dresden <clears throat> I was speaking English with, this, with, my, with a German friend and this drunken, like, he was a day drinking tramp, he came up to us in the station or not, he was walking past us in the train station and heard English and he was like you come into this country you don't even speak the language you should get out, get out now and like and then we, he didn't realise that the girl I was with was German anyway, so she just started speaking <laughs> to him in German. And then when I joined in in German, he was just was a bit confused. <laughs> I love it. Love but, um, that was the only time that I've ever sort of felt, you know, not personal. Not welcome. Yeah, not welcome. Yeah. Uh, I know that's not the case for everyone, because I do, I do think a big part of, of it is, unfortunately, the colour of my skin gets me, you know, yeah. a lot of places within Europe. Um, no, I do, I do yeah, agree with that's that. My experience. That. So, like, if if there's anyone listening, here's the uh, philosophical advice time. Um, if you know someone was looking to to go to a different country, would you, would you have any advice for them? I think, by the sounds of it, I mean, if we sum up what we've both done with our attitudes towards going abroad, if you're thinking of going abroad and you don't know where it is, you just need to have a purpose as to why you're going abroad in the first place, you know? Mm -hmm. If you don't know why you're going abroad, just go travelling. Just do it to go travelling. Don't go yeah. and live somewhere where you've got no purpose. Like, you had to go to England, you had a, uh, a study, you know, you had a course, mm -hmm. and in Canada you had a job. For me, with Germany and Luxembourg, both times it's been for studying, you know, I've had that, that was my reason for being there. So that gives you a focus while you're there, and then as you're there, you can just kind of branch out and work it out and get a feel for the place. And yeah. I think that's probably the biggest thing. You know, if you're someone who's fed up with where you are, whatever country that may be in or city that may be in, just try and work out what it is you would like to do and then think, actually, I could do that in another country. So if whatever you want to do is just do a different type of job, um, but it's not necessarily country specific, then you can do that anywhere, particularly if you're yeah. a native English speaker. I you know? completely agree. But I do think if you want to go and do it, have a purpose, have a reason to go. If you don't have a reason why you're going to live somewhere, just go visit it and travel maybe for a bit and, f and just work out what, you're, what you want. You know? I don't know, what, what would yeah, you I say? Commit. <laughs> don't, you know, like, just f tr do your best to throw yourself into everything for the first while at least, and, and find out if you're going to like whatever you're throwing yourself into or the people involved or not, you know? Worst comes to worst, you step back after a month of uh, playing for, uh, your, you know, or joining a gym or joining a Pilates class, whatever. Just step back if you don't like it. I, I think commit, give everything a go, you know? Um, it sounds so cliche, but don't leave anything behind and don't have any regrets if you're in a new place. Yeah, definitely. You know, like if if I was to leave here now this summer, <clears throat> and I'd be like, oh, but I never got around to doing this, or I never got around to doing that. Like, why didn't I? That kind of thing. I think just do it. Go give it a go, and then and then at least, as you said, if you don't like it, you can say, oh well, you know what, I tried it. So yeah, guys, uh, to end on that like, nice little note for this podcast, um, that was myself and James talking about how uh, both of us have lived abroad in the various places we've been. Uh, if you want to hear more of us, you know you do, uh, check us out on our YouTube channel. For now, it's the Foley and James podcast. Subscribe, like, share, comment, all of the social media stuff. We really appre appreciate any help that you guys are giving us. You know, we really do. We're trying to grow this. And uh, if it's one subscriber a week or one subscriber a month at a time, then that's uh, better than nothing. It really is. <clears throat> Soon we shall be on a podcast format with a change of name to our podcast, but we'll let you guys know uh, over the uh, the usual platforms, which are Facebook, which we're both on, myself and James. <laughs> uh, Twitter, we're both on that. James is at TweetBelsey. 
I'm at OCR Cove. I'm also at OCR Cove on Instagram, and I'm Crazy Axel on Snapchat. So add away to uh, both of us on all of those platforms, and um, keep an eye and an ear out for our next podcast. So unless James has anything to say? Nope. Awesome. Catch you next time, guys. Bye-bye.